Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of Justice League number 41. Did a video earlier today about, uh, uh, people are saying I should make it the, not the pinned tweet. Whatever is the pinned tweet version of YouTube, it's like the welcome video. I remember Comic Book Girl uh, used to have one, and I used to watch it all the time because she was super cute in it. But uh, anyway, uh, this one was called, why the channel is called Diversity in Comics, and it was kind of actually more like the videos I used to do in the earlier days where I would kind of talk elliptically about comics in general and not just be like there's an SJW that's an SJW goose clearly SJW <laughs> but uh, uh, so I, it's actually nice that that one's doing really well and and um, but my question is do does anyone care about the featured video or the introduction video the only channel I've ever watched on was Comic Girl 19, and that's just, she made like all these cute expressions, so probably watched that one like 20, 30 times. Anyway, this is Justice League, which I bought because I thought the premise and the cover was cool. Uh, Black Panther just came out. I think it just became the number one superhero movie ever. It's crazy. Um, so it's a basically the Black Panther, except for he's called the Red Lion versus uh, the Justice League. And there's kind of a meta contextual thing is that Christopher Priest, he was the guy who really saved Black Panther and had this great run and it's kind of had this con continuing connection to him. So I was like, oh, this is gonna be pretty cool. And um, it's all right. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm trying, I was trying to figure out why it was just all right. And uh, I'll get into that during this one. So. We start off in the two Green Lanterns. I don't know. This storyline, I can never tell if I missed an issue. I don't, I, I, they're referring to something. Oh, that was a while ago. Okay, so I haven't read this in like five issues. Because something that was in the last issue I read is, in, they say it's in issue 36. By the way, that's really, really helpful. Um, they start off with two Green Lanterns, but they're not in the story. A little talky. Honestly, I took a break during the middle of this page. I was uh, interspersing with work. Some stuff with Deathstroke, uh, but then he doesn't really do anything. And then we get talking about the pseudo Wakanda. They're trying to claim the uh, Justice League Watchtower, which crashed. Pretty good shot. I mean, at first when I turned this, I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Except for this obviously SJW goose right here. Um, but uh, there's just something about this that was kind of just bland. There's a, a level of being professional, but not exciting. And then I got to the end before I realized it. I go, cross-gen. This is a cross-gen book. <laughs> like, there's nothing wrong with it, but there's this feeling of bland competence, competence that doesn't really get me that excited. So anyway, it's, um, it's basically almost like a Star Trek story. Uh, prime directive, they don't want to get involved with the... Uh, the funny thing is, it's totally not a Prime Directive uh, situation because uh, their watchtower crashed into this country and then they're basically saying, we're not going to get involved with anything that happened, but a gigantic skyscraper spaceship crashed. Like, you're involved, you know? <laughs> it's like you go into like a place that sells fine china, you know, to use their restroom and you're like the bull in the china shop, you knock down a bunch of stuff, you go, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just here to use the restroom, okay? I'm not trying to get all up in your china shop here. Um, I don't know why a bull would use a restroom. Maybe you're like a man bull or something like that, or you transform, transformed into a human, but then you had to go to the bathroom, so you became, you reverted to your bull form. Anyway, um, one of the things I was thinking afterwards is there's a lot of talking in it and the talking is kind of interesting but not that interesting and then I remember that this is a comic book and it's about a guy who can fly and he could have been doing uh, other things than give the expression my son uh, makes when I ask him why he didn't do his homework until like 9 p.m. on a Sunday night I don't know dad I don't know what what uh, so, you know, basically it's a Wakanda situation. And then we get this kind of awkward, um, can you do, go talk to the black people? Because, you know, you're 
Well, you know, you're... Well, you know, you're a cyborg, and black people love cyborgs. No, it's because he's... It's Africa. Um, so then we cut to this, this one. This one just made me... I was just so confused. So there's this guy in blonde hair, and he's, like, pointing a gun. And then this guy in a wheelchair... He's like, uh, oh my gosh, I'm your biggest fan. And he's like, is that my gun? He's like, yeah, I just thought I would point it at you for no reason. What? You're Aquaman. Um, so then, okay, look at this face. I feel like, so then it feels like Christopher Priest is kind of trying to pull a D's nuts prank on the reader or Aquaman. And then he just leaves you hanging. No pun intended. Um... So you, you are Joshua? My friend called me D's, short for Diesel. God, bro. That's not how you do it. You say, my first name's D's, and then you just stop talking. And you make this really expectant uh, look like, my first name, my first name, don't you know what, don't you wonder what my last name is? Don't you want to ask me like, D's nuts? <laughs> my neighbors definitely heard that one. Um, so it's a subplot where they think he uh, didn't uh, hack the network on the watchtower, caused all these problems. There's a pretty good, again, it's okay. Wow. Okay. So hi, kids. Welcome to uh, art school with your boy, Zach. This is a big rookie mistake. And I don't want to call out the guy by name because he's good. He's promising. He's definitely promising. Um, I was going to say he's not quite at the level to draw Justice League, but Justice League isn't like the book like it was in the 80s and the 90s. It's just a book, and that's probably the problem here. Um, there are certain sort of special titles that you used to get on them, and it's a big deal. You're like, ooh, I'm on Amazing Spider-Man. I really swing for the fences. Ooh, I'm on X, Uncanny X-Men. You know, everyone's looking at me. Oh, Justice League, this is great. Now it's just like, all those books are just whatever books. Just turn out whatever. This is not whatever art. I mean, the guy's obviously trying. But the deal is, this thing where you just fill the entire page? No. Stop it. First of all, this establishing shot is too close. I just thought it was more of the wreckage of the Watchtower. Turns out that LexCorp has established like a, a FOB, a forward operating base. And, uh, oh no, wait, I screwed that part up. It's actually the ship. It's this flying helicarrier thing. But then when you cut to it, it's so close, I didn't even realize it was in the air. I thought it was just like on the ground and this is just a bush. I didn't realize that was like a whole forest. Uh, you need to pull it back out because you've gone to this scene and the D's, the, the D's nuts joke that was not properly executed. Okay, D's nuts jokes, they're not that funny. But if you time them, they're funny. And I don't know how you're going to have a guy named Dees with this face like, come on, don't you want to ask me what my last name is? Don't you? Don't you? Don't you? Don't you? You cut back here. I'm still. I'm just still thinking about the dangling Dees nest joke that was not properly executed. Anyway, this is a reestablishing shot. It's the same scene, just a moment later than right here. But, you know, you had two pages and a full page. Remind me where we are. I thought we were on the ground. I thought there was just some other little base. So then they fly aboard board it, and uh, they're landing. But this, even though it's a different angle, totally blends into this. It's gutters are nice. They help separate things in your brain. The gutter is the... They used to, you know, always have the boxes, and there'd be this little... Think about that thick, maybe like a third of a centimeter. Oh, God, I'm explaining something that's right here. Okay, this is a gutter. This is not a gutter. Um... See how these are, I mean, it's kind of obvious. They're a lot more separated in your head, except for some guy got visited by the good idea fairy and wanted to put Superman in not the best uh, upshot to his face. Now you're connecting it. So this is also a really cool panel in a helicopter that probably should have been, this should have been a reverse shot. You see this coming in and then you have close up to something. This is, um, there's a lot of, and then we get a skip flat, panel, flat, panel. I know this is a bit that Christopher Priest does, but he started this bit in like 1998. Your bit, you do your bits and then they run the course 
And uh, by the way, this thing with his his arms parallel, no, one should be higher than the other. One should be twisted a little different. This this right here, this is 3D Model City. Okay, so then again, kind of the same problem with this page is you put everything's a little too close. You're not separate. You, you got the gutters, but mm, it's just it's hard to kind of explain what's wrong with this. Nothing's wrong in like each individual panel, but overall nothing's jumping out. And Superman has been small. Oh, now this is a, a real problem with um, team books. Is you say, oh, I want to give everyone their spotlight, but you got to hold, squeeze a whole team. So what you end up getting is all this, you get small, flash, medium size, you know, medium, small, small, and then close-ups. Uh, it's a real trick, and one of the things you have to do is you get to realize that even when it's a team book, with rare exceptions, you got to make one person King Dingling. And you can transfer the King Dingling Scepter, which looks exactly like one of those batons from track and field. What did you think I was going to say? I saw John Malin do it in Cable. He was very good about it. Yeah, it's a whole team of like eight people, but guess what? This is the blink page. She's in front. She's big. And the team just these little dots in the background. Then all of a sudden, Longshot does something. So he'll get a couple, of real, three, four panels where it looks really good. He's really in the spotlight. And this also goes, you know, to the to the uh, writer. So I just feel like at this point, the Bendis is coming is clearly like a her der in joke. Because the last one, it was just uh, the last time they did Bendis coming, they showed this honestly. I think it was this one. That's not that is not I was going to say that's not Jim Lee's finest work. That's isn't that bro. This one's actually a little bit better. I'm not exactly sure who the artist is. But this little kind of like, get it? Like, he's like, Ben, this is coming. Get it? I don't want bro Superman doing these Herder Junior High jokes. Also, it's not 19... It's not 2004. So Ben, this is coming is not that big event you think it is. Uh, so then we, put, uh, <laughs> we uh, meet this guy who... <laughs> This is like, this costume just made me laugh. Now, one of the things I don't like is I don't like everything dark and drab. This is like, I know what's the problem with this costume. The problem is this costume is every part of it was like designed like right here. It's like, oh, I got a cool idea for a shoulder armor. And I got a cool idea for like an alternate Superman. It's like, what if it was like chainmail, but it was like not. Like every part, if you're that close, you're like, oh, that looks kind of cool. The mask is kind of cool. It's kind of like... Green Lantern, I see what they're doing, his thing's kind of like, but you pull out, you're like, oh, God, no, that's just awful. I do realize it's supposed to be an amalgam of all the Justice League costumes. Oh, <laughs> that is, whoo. This should be the superhero mascot for Planned Parenthood, because this costume it is an abortion. Uh, then we get back to what the hell is my brain looking at? Get some gutters. I don't like what is this? Feels like like you should like turn this page a couple. T Which way is the right side up? How long do I stare at this before I see the sailboat? Okay, so the guy whose name is not Dee's, and I really wish it's Dee's because then I could ask him what his last name is. Shoots a thing. That's. Kind of hard to tell what it is. I guess it's the imitation Green Lantern ring, but it's like electricity. Batman just stands there like a feeb. So I guess reading this the second time, the thing is he's supposed to be imitating the Justice League, but there was so much talking. I was really just, and the talking's just like, um, guess you met D's. Oh, but really, bro? Really? You're gonna hit me with a Bofa joke after a D? Like, don't blame him. He don't know nothing. Got himself run over by a beer truck when he was 19. He didn't know I cloned his credentials, copied his briefing book. You folks assumed I'd been using the watchtower's transporter to get around based on false transporter traces I fed into the system. But I knew it would occur to you that before we built the watchtower, he must have built a prototype. The transporter prototype would be stored here in LexCorp's lab. We got it. We got it. You made us think it was D's, but it was actually... Bofa, who did it. God, it would have been great if this guy would have been Bofa and the other guy was named Dees. 
He just would have. And then like they never, they never do the punchline. It would drive. It would basically be like some Guantanamo Bay torture type stuff. Um, and then Batman just one punches him, uh, and then he just stands there like. You can give him any dialogue. This is Batman. He just doesn't talk. Doesn't talk. Doesn't talk. Uh, and then we cut to the like this is back to the Star Trek. It's like the Prime Directive states, no, no, you, bro. You don't get to pull a prime directive storyline when you do this to a country. Then it just has to be like, okay, we are definitely involved with goddamn everything. It's almost like the Puerto Rico uh, uh, situation. Sorry if I've taken the Lord's name in vain for people who don't like that. So, so uh, Kurt Eichenwald uh, was uh, uh, popped back up uh, to... Um, uh, oh, God, do I even want to tell this story? He basically like pulled like a fourth grade move and he's like, tell Ethan to tell Zach that I'm taking his followers and make, and make sure he knows it. It's like, okay. But um, he was doing about Puerto Rico. He's like, Puerto Rico is without power. I wonder why that is, but we all know. Uh, Puerto Rico is never in that great a shape. Uh, I think everyone from Puerto Rico will agree to that. Uh, by the way, uh, if you don't know about Puerto Rico, people from Puerto Rico just call it the island. So there's this really interesting thing about Puerto Ricans. I'm just talking about Puerto Ricans now. Um, I don't even remember how I got on this subject. That uh, Puerto Ricans love Puerto Rico, uh, but they don't want to live there because it's not in that great of shape. Um, uh, you, if you talk to people who grew up there, you'll hear these uh, uh, ridiculous stories about living in... Uh, buildings on the side of hills that were permanently tilted at like a 15 degree they're like it was my i grew up my entire life walking through a kitchen tilted like this and then so they're like oh yeah my family's uh, uh house fell down the side of the mountain it's like but it was kind of falling for like 30 years and we didn't do anything um but uh anyway there's so that so we get a lot of like we can't do this but we're getting involved and then i don't know I guess this is a spoiler, but it's so stupid. It's like, honestly, it's the fact that, that in a perfectly good uh, thing, they got a little SJW, and then I was just like, whatever. There's a reason we choose to stay out of these conflicts, Diana. What kind? Diana, if this were a crowd from Yankee Stadium, would we actually be this torn over what to do? Um, what? Would we just stand here, ringing our... Mm, Actually, then that might even not even be SJW. It might be anti-SJW. She might be just be saying, why are you overthinking this stuff just because we're in Africa? Yeah, that's actually a good point. Uh, so then this guy who's right in the front, this kid who has not been established over, he just shoots him with like this horribly generic gun. And uh, Superman, who's right there. Oh, wait, sorry. They did introduce it right here. While the guy who could see through everything but lead and the kid just takes the gun out while the other kid eats the apple from Snow White. Uh, and they're just best, both having this Star Trek Federation uh, conversation. He just pulls the gun out. He's like, do, 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 do. Oh, look, they even start establishing it. He's got a little meanie face. And the kid's reacting like, oh my god, this apple's delicious and my brother's about to shoot Superman. So they're just talking, talking, talking. By the way, I love how flat her head is. I feel like there was like a word balloon there and then it got moved and they forgot to unflatten her head. But uh, then she just pulls it out all slow. So one of the things I said, like I'm, I'm missing certain stuff, but when you put all of this text, it's like that, that my, my eye goes like this. My eye doesn't go like this and see the weird looking like M4 coming out. I just see that, 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 that. And then he shoots him. And he makes this face. What part of your plan was this going to work? Like you haven't heard of Superman. Like you did. Oh, and then it's like, oh my gosh, a ricochet went into Diana. But, what? Eh, isn't Diana? And then he's like, what was your plan? You were going to kill Superman? But somehow it horrifies you that she caught a stray bullet? By the way, she's very like... Langorious and just beautiful. Like, that's like the beauty. Look at her. It's great. Um, and <laughs> I love this expression. 
This looks like one of like the this looks like the first boyfriend in a lot of those Lifetime movies. Like he's okay, but then she finds a better guy because he really didn't he didn't come up to her mom's farm when her mom needed help after she fell, she fell down the stairs right before they had the Christmas decoration contest. Um, but anyway, I just it's, it's stupid. Um, so uh, okay storyline that kind of got uh, memed by some not ready for prime time art. But more importantly, someone who's not being given guidance. I know back in the day, they used to have art directors. John Romita Jr. was famously the art director in the uh, 80s and the early 90s at Marvel. That should really be a position in the credits because it's important. And I don't know what Brian Cunningham and Re Be Becca Taylor are doing, but give this kid some guidance. I'm assuming he's young, Philip Briones. I haven't seen it before, but okay, story, uh, subpar art, and this SJW goose is annoying. They should just look at him. Look at him. It's like Trump. I hate Trump followers. Um, anyway, but uh, boy, this one, what the hell? This is going to be a fight. Actually, I was just had a busy day, so I was just vamping this whole time. Okay. So uh, anyway, it's like, it's it's uh, this is a neutral. I'm not recommending it or roasting it. It's just kind of like, eh. Spell that. Make that a hashtag. Uh, anyway, so uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the Super Chat and the Patreon. You're funding original content. Oh, and I'm going to have a live stream. Just do this one. It's another one of those true believers. Pretty excited about this one. Slot, Ramos, Suevas, Delgado. Um, but... I don't know why I put it back when I'm still talking about it. I was going to have this at 8 uh, p.m. Central. 9 p.m. Wait. nine, Whatever. Basically, my point is, I was going to have it tonight. And then Nurk is just having one. And he already, like, he claimed it. So, bro code section 4, paragraph B clearly states, you don't schedule a live stream when your bro has one. Uh, so I might do it, uh, earlier or later, just stay tuned and, uh, for that one.